This is really exciting. The brand new Project Tiny version three has finally arrived. And I'm so excited to share with you all the new features and the new roadmap ahead. Now let's talk about it. Project Tiny has now been redone for the third time, which is great. The first time version one was done in TypeScript. That was really more of a proof of concept to see if it's possible to take Project Tiny and bring it into the Unity world and use something that's similar to, to C Sharp, which is TypeScript, which is also made and pushed by Microsoft and see if that will work in building web tools. And it did, it worked just, it was a different workflow and a new language, which really isn't Unity's thing. C Sharp is Unity's main language. So uh, version two came out and that brought in C Sharp and that brought in a complete version of dots because the TypeScript version had its own version of dots. And once again, it was more of a port and more of a, a minimum viable product to see if it will work. Version two fully supported C Sharp and added support for the dots framework. The difference with version two was version two actually supported dots, but in a weird new Unity editor workflow. So you actually had to switch editors, which was really weird. Uh, jarring and sometimes things didn't work when you were switching the editors. When I say switching the editors, we we're still using the Unity editor, but it would just snap in, it would reload itself and it was just a new experience. And it just really wasn't comfortable for Unity developers in general, including myself. One of the main features of both version one and two were 2D support. Now, 3D support was lacking. However, it was something that was always thought to be coming soon in the roadmap. Now, we come to version three, which is now starting with 3D support. And now 2D support is gonna be coming later on. One of the biggest, biggest changes in version three now is full support for the dots framework in the current Unity editor. This is major. This means everything that we worked on in the new dots workflow, including creating game objects and having the game objects and, and entity conversion system is all baked in. Also using fully dots oriented stack, the data oriented technology stack, you're gonna have the ability to now use Unity's new future proof coding standards. There are some changes that are coming down the pipeline as this is still an early build, but we do have job support, which is great, which means multi-threading support. We do have full support for the web, which is amazing. We have both Asm.js as well as WebAssembly. Now, the difference between the two is Asm.js was the first iteration of being able to do higher quality, bigger builds on the web and is supported or has a wider support net currently. WebAssembly is now the next version and that will give us even more power as well as better performance. Now, a couple of noted features that are missing are going to be your 2D support that's coming in the future, UI support that's also coming in the future, as well as a couple of other things, including the Unity physics system. So you're going to be doing some workarounds right now when using Project Tiny, but the performance and the future proofing of Project Tiny is finally here. All right. Enough talking about it. Let's jump in and actually see the first demo of Project Tiny working in the Chrome browser. Here it is, Project Tiny's first working example, and it's Tiny Racing working in the Chrome browser. Now I'm going to be using Chrome 79, which just came out. However, it'll work on any version. Different browsers will have just slightly different performances, and that's really based on the support for either Asm.js or WebAssembly. So let's just jump right into this. As you can see, we have our start off, and the cars are going. I'm using the keyboards, so keyboard support is also included. I have a little booster there, and I can go around the track. You can see the particle system on the cars with the exhaust pipes. And if I jump into that little oil spill, you can see that I slow down. And just to know, this is using Unity's new dots framework. That's the data oriented tech stack, which is, this is amazing to see this in a 
web browser coming out of Unity. One of the downsides currently on the web is that the authoring workflow is terrible. It is so difficult to iterate over creating 3D or Canvas, really any Canvas type application on the web, because the authoring is just really difficult for you to add items and script at the same time. So if you're adding visuals and scripting, it's really difficult. Now you can hear the audio support. So we have audio support. We do not have animation support. This physics is a simple iteration of physics because Unity's current physics implementations are not supported in Project Tiny yet, but they will be coming soon. The UI is also a bit of a hack. However, UI support is something that is going to be coming as soon as possible in 2020. Jobs is supported, which means we do have access to multi-threading. Burst is not fully supported. It is partially supported and it's only supported for build releases, which is cool because when you're building out to the web, you want it to be as small as possible. Project Tiny is here now. We can begin our beta testing development workflows now, start working on game slices and doing our minimum viable products or MVP for short and start really testing out and breaking Project Tiny because of our support in version one, two, and now three, Project Tiny has seen so many improvements in the workflow and how it actually functions. And that be is because of the testers. So please beta test this thing, try you know some things that are normal, try some things that are odd, and try to push the boundaries so that we can get Project Tiny in production quality as soon as possible. While we're playing this, I wanna draw your attention to the frames per second meter. While I'm running, you can see up here in the corner, I am running at roughly 59.9 frames per second. So we're talking about almost a solid 60 frames per second. And as far as the GPU goes, you can see I'm using only 4.4 megabytes of GPU. Now my max is, you know, obviously the system's max. However, you can see nowhere near the max, and we're staying roughly in that same 60 frames per second range. Now I'm gonna to try to do a whole bunch of other things and see if I can get it to slow down a little bit. Nope, not slowing down. And this is very impressive, very impressive to have audio running as well as the dots framework and a custom physics all running at 60 frames per second. That's very important for quality as well as performance. That means we have a lot to work on without the, the worry of breaking the system. So this is solid. This is a good one. 